You know, quite often I've done videos discussing the fact that people are in religions and they get out of a religion, but their spouse is still in the religion. Or they meet someone and that person, they're, they're amazing, they're wonderful, but the thing that keeps them separated is the fact of religion. Uh, this is the question when you have people of different religions who come together, or for the most part, and what we're going to discuss here is when people are religious and spiritual and how those two sometimes don't work, but how they can work. We always want to find a solution or a method in order to make things, these things work. And we're going to talk about and utilize for an example, one of my personal heroes, which is Muhammad Ali and his marital situation. It's not his fighting life, but his marital life. We're going to discuss those at length as well. So I want to thank everybody for visiting with me. I'm your coach Renz. I'm your 360 degree alchemy coach. We talk about everything from um, dealing with your health, your wealth, dealing with your spirituality and your relationships. And today we're talking spirituality and relationships in a combination. So if you support this channel by, by um, shopping at Uncle Renz Popcorn, I greatly appreciate everyone who purchased from there. It supports this channel. It allows me to do what I'm doing. Um, and it's also building a business um, that I'll be able to affect the community and affect the world at large. So I greatly appreciate that. As well as those who support me on Patreon. Thank you very, very, very much. I give full gratitude to those who support me on Patreon. As well as those who are my coaching clients at CoachRens.com. As well as those who subscribe to the page. If you are haven't subscribed, at least at minimum. If you watch my videos and you find something about them that impacts your life, that makes your life a little bit better, that gives you just a little bit of something that says that I can make my life better, then please hit the subscribe button and also hit the bell icon so you get notifications when we do something as far as downloading a new video or should do a live cast or post anything. So I appreciate that. And everybody on Facebook and Instagram and everywhere else, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. So let's get your life right. I did a video some years ago where I talked about how to work through a situation where you leave religion and your spouse is not and how to make it work. And for those who requested the video, I still f track them. I still follow them. Um, so I see that they have utilized these things to make their relationships work. Now, as some of you may know, if you followed enough of my videos, 900 plus videos, then you know that um, to date you know that I was married to my high school sweetheart. Um, we were friends, then we got married, married for 17 years. We were of different religions, well, so to speak. I was coming out of religion during all those years um, that she knew me, met me, and we have three wonderful children and we've raised them to be, open, to be free thinkers. Not so much to follow one doctrine or the other, but to be free thinkers. They learned her religion, they learned my free thinking. So. Um, it worked. Was it the religion that split us? No. I got married again to another young lady. She was Christian. Was it the religion that split us? No. There again, the answer is no. It's personalities. It's traits. It's um, ways of doing things, ways of living, ways of other thoughts. That's what split each one of those relationships. I have yet to be or been in a situation where I have either married or dated someone where religion was the key point that caused us to not be together. So, of course, from my experience, I'm going to say that religion and spirituality can coexist, that different religions can coexist. Does that mean there won't be any trials? There won't be any uh, sticking points? Of course there will be. Of course there will be, especially when there are children involved, when there are children involved, there is always an issue at that point. When there are other family members involved, of course, those can be issues if you allow those family members and friends to partake upon your relationship. But what we're going to discuss today is many different scenarios, a couple of different scenarios of how you can make it work and scenarios that may just not work and you will know how to avoid them. Um, so I, I'm gonna make this video um, short, for me, <laughs> but uh, hopefully you guys, I know you guys are going to get some, great, get some great information from this video. So first, let's break down two things, two concepts, religion, spirituality. What is religion? What, I mean, what is it? We say this easily and it's kind of convoluted, but in the basic text of the idea, religion 
is a set of doctrine, a set of processes, traditions that anyone may follow in order to have this um, presence, this understanding of God, the creator, the infinite wisdom, whatever you want to call it. Um, as the Shakespearean play says, or Shakespeare says, a rose by any name will still be a rose. So whether you call it Allah, Jehovah, Yahweh, Karma, Buddha, um, divine consciousness, whatever you call it, uh, God by any in, in, uh, intelligent designer, God by any name, is still God. It is man who makes the religions. There's a man who decides this is Christianity, this is Judaism, this is Islam, this is Buddhist, this is Zoroastrian, this is uh, Kemetic science, this is Christian science, this is Hindu, this is Shinto, this is the Tao, this is blah, 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 blah. 4,200 different religions that exist in the world today that are practiced in the world today. And if we go through time and space, we will find that there have been tens of thousands of religions over the recorded history of man for the last eight to 10,000 years. Eight to 10,000 years, we have had so many religions, whether it's uh, Ifa, uh, whether it's um, the, the Aztec, the Mayan uh, in, um, religions, the Hopi Indians, no matter what, the, those of the Samoan, New Zealand, the, the Aboriginals, you know, Wiccans, no matter what we, there's been so many, the Greek, what we call them, the Greek mythology, the Roman mythology, the Kemetic mythologies, uh, the Norse mythologies, all the, what we call mythologies today, because there are very few to no pe no one who practice those religions today, because they, those were religions in their time. So God, the creator, by any name, still the creator, we are all talking about a divine being, that created everything or divine beings that culminated to create everything, whether it came out of chaos and, and, you know, birthed out of the mouth or spoken by the word, whatever it is, it's all the same. It, 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 it just variations based on what man has created and what man has created is called religion. When we say that you can only take a thousand steps or you sin, where they say that um, the marriage ceremony goes this way or that way. Whether we say you jump a broom or you stand in front of a, a priest or you go into the temple, you go into the holiest of holies, it is all things of man. Whether we say the Saturday is the Sabbath, Sunday is the Sabbath. For all creation stories and every creation story, there was no calendar. So these are all things that man has put a, a fork and a stake in the ground where man has said, this is where I'm planting my planting my flag. And for that, others have followed. Um, people have come, prophets, uh, messiahs, teachers, ascended masters, gurus. They've all come and they've established a way of being, a, 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 a cultural bias to follow. And through those cultural bias, they develop into a religion. Because even within every tradition, religion, there are a multitude of variations. These variations are dependent, they came about through argument, they came about through disagreement, they came about through uh, political change, they came about through cultural change. All of them kept coming about because of some change one or another. They came through in integration, through racism, through all different types of method. These are religions created by man, followed by man. Supposedly the rules for knowing God. On the other hand, we have spirituality. Spirituality is purely this. It is having a relationship either with the creator or every spiritual being on the planet. Some, though, the, some of those who are spiritual uh, claim connection or oneness with not only God, but with the trees and the, the rabbit and the grass and the, the air and the planets and numbers and every other force in the universe and within the idea of spiritualism that has always existed there are different variations there like i just said some say there's a connection with the oneness with god while others say there's a connection there is no oneness with god but there's a oneness with the universe and that oneness with god and the universe some say they're both the same 
Others will say that it's the oneness with other people. And, and and not all the animals and the plants and those sorts of things that even though they have life and energy but it's not the oneness with them but a oneness with every conscious being on your conscious level that that is it or you just ascending to higher conscious level it's the knowledge of self it's the growth within the self it within every religious group there has been spiritual um, break-offs within every religion some of them were initiated by a spirituality that became a religion so there is a lot of intermixing and convolution that's going on here that says to a person like ah this is why some people can say i'm religious and i'm spiritual or i'm spirit spiritual but i'm not religious or i'm spiritual but i am religious um you know there's there's different variations and it all comes down to the individual at the end of the day it's up to the individual now in this, we have people who meet one another. They get to know one another. They have all these things about them that they like, things that they love. And then they say, oh, but that spiritual thing, that religious thing, that's the point of not getting there. It reminds me of the marital life of Muhammad Ali. As some of you may know, if you don't know who Muhammad, you should know who Muhammad Ali is. I'm, if you don't know who Muhammad Ali is, I, I got a question. Are you like, have you been around? <laughs> Even someone who's like 10, 12 years old knows who Muhammad Ali is. But the greatest, the world's greatest, the boxer, the philanthropist, the philosopher, um, the civil right cultural mover, shaker, Muhammad Ali. Muhammad Ali was married four times. His first marriage, I don't have all the names. His first marriage, she was a cocktail waitress. She was a Christian. She converted to Islam for him, but she would not wear Islamic garb. She would wear lipstick, makeup. She would go out. She would go to bars and hang out and party. She was introduced to him by his manager, uh, Herbert Muhammad, but she wasn't Islamic enough. He he liked what she he saw. He liked her good time girl, but she wasn't Islamic enough for him. So they broke up. And many people will say at that time, well, you you married a man and you switched your religion for him. Therefore, that's why it didn't work. No. Even though she didn't put on the guard, but it was her character or behavior that didn't work with him. That's why it didn't work, according to his autobiography his second wife Belinda she grew up in a Muslim family a family converted to Islam she was pre-Muslim before she met him already Muslim he was a member of Nation of Islam she was a nation member of the Nation of Islam they followed the same tenets they followed the same beliefs they were in the same religion but yet their relationship ended as well. Their relationship ended because she was too Muslim. <laughs> too, uh, what's this word I want to say? Too, too, too quiet, not as exciting. Um, that created situations where he was, in, um, he, he, he cheated on her, basically. He, he, he had infidelities. Uh, so, even two people of the same religion, it didn't work. And we see this all the time. The divorce rate in the uh, Christian church is just as high as those outside the Christian church. Uh, some groups, the divorce rate is so low, it's low not because people are just so happy, but because the people, uh, their tradition is still so stigmatizing when it comes to a divorce. They're, uh, in certain countries, uh, like in Saudi Arabia, a, a woman trying to get a divorce from her Islamic husband is nigh impossible. Uh, but if she does, she's an outcast. She won't be able to feed herself, feed her family. There, she's so restricted in what she can do. She can barely work. She can barely do anything to take care. I mean, it's almost like how if you read the the the, the Hebrew Bible and it speaks in the Old Testament for some of you, it talks about how if a woman wasn't married. Oh, be, better yet. The story of, of Ruth and Boaz, but if you focus on Naomi, you'll understand that Naomi, husband gone, sons are gone, 
she didn't wasn't able to truly inherit the land that her fa her husband and her sons uh, her husband had because her sons had passed on so she had no way so her and Ruth had to just um take what was left over until Boaz stepped into the picture they lived on the fringe of society because a woman's value was only based on her husband and her sons and you still have this today in certain cultures where the value of the woman is still based on her husband and her sons so in these situations and they are plentiful you have it where okay a woman getting a divorce it's not feasible it doesn't happen so divorce rate may look low but the happiness rate the elation rate, the love rate is low, very low. I've been to these countries. This is not just something I've, I've read. I've been to these countries. I've ate with these people. I've spent time with these people. You know, I've been to some of the, um, the Muslim countries. I've been to some of the Hindu countries. I've been to some of the Buddhist countries. I've been to the European countries, the African countries, American countries, Central American, South American. I've been to a lot of these countries and I've seen the variations. And I've seen what religion plays in many of them. So when we look at these rates, I don't just context it with the numbers, but I index it with the culture. And in those cultures, you find these rates are equal, equally high. They're equally high in my opinion, because we get so caught up into religion and spirituality, we forget the love. We forget the love. We forget the love. So, Muhammad Ali's second wife, she was Muslim. Third wife, not Muslim. Converted over to Islam. Still didn't work. Fourth wife, converted over to Islam. That one, until he passed on. Level of happiness, we don't really know. We don't really know. But at this time frame is when he developed Parkinson and, and his life totally changed. And, you know, it, is, it was the change in him that began to make a difference in the longevity of his relationship. Um, this now, And understand, just because you're in the same religion doesn't necessarily mean it's going to work. I once worked with a couple. I wasn't working with them as far as uh, their spirituality, but I was working with them as far as I was training. I was a personal trainer to the wife. The wife would extol to me her unhappiness. And the husband would also do the same, even though I wasn't his trainer. Uh, because we, he, was, he was a salesman. I love sales. So we would have our discussions. Uh, he was Southern Baptist. She was Catholic. She stopped practicing Catholicism to satisfy her husband and her husband's family. The children, though, she demanded, went to a Catholic private school. Initially, the idea was for the educational purposes, but there was a part in there that she later admitted was purely so that her children would learn Catholicism. As the parents involved themselves more in their relationship, their relationship strained apart. And as that strain got farther and farther apart, she went back to Catholicism, showing that she truly converted to Southern Baptist solely for him, solely for him. And it wasn't because she found some divine purpose in it. She found her purpose in Catholicism. She found her connection, I should say, in Catholicism. That's her path. Who am I to say anything different? They are still married today. They went through something. It wasn't until uh, they cut portion a, a quarter of his salary and a quarter of his bonuses annually that their relationship actually got better. When they had to sell off a couple of their houses, when they had to reduce the amount of go, 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 go they had in their life. I mean, they had so much go that they hired a person to just help, not do all, help to shuttle the teenagers around for their different events and whatnot. It wasn't until their life slowed down that they were able to focus on their relationship. It wasn't until they got out of a partnership and a real estate deal with their parents, his parents, that they were able to then spend more time just focusing on each other. And that is where the hallmark of this all comes in. Being in a spiritual relationship with someone, being in a, um, 
religious relationship with someone really comes down to how much respect you're going to have for one another. You can have two people in a spiritual relationship, two people who claim to be spiritual. But what I have found in many spiritual relationships is that one person may be, especially since I'm a heavily melanated man, is that one person may be super ultra pro black in their spirituality. And they're saying that, you know, the black woman is God or they're saying that go back to our ancestors or they're saying that black people were the first people and these white people are aliens. They got the RH gene or whichever that gene is that people talk about. I think it is RH, the monkey gene or whatever. And they, they are a different species and they are so racist. And yes, you can be racist even if you come from the oppressed, mostly oppressed group or fine. You could be prejudiced. How about that? But they are so racist that I often look and say, how do you claim spirituality and consciousness and you're racist? If I peel back all the skin, get rid of the skin, get rid of the hair, you wouldn't tell one person from the other, one group from the other. We'd all look the same. I recently went to the bodies exhibit. Peel back the skin, just show the muscle and the skeletal system, the organs and all that sort of thing. And we all look the same. We're all the same. Got the same stuff inside. And if we're all energetic, the, spirit, the, the spiritual groups and the conscious group says we're all energy. We're all energetic beings trying to rediscover ourselves. If this is the case, what color is energy? Does energy have a different color? Does energy have a race? For those of you who read the Kabbalion and you actually come to an understanding of it, you recognize that we are on this third dimensional plane of existence and then there is a higher dimensional plane of existence. At that higher dimensional plane of existence, you do not live in this body. This body is null and void. If you're a Christian or a Buddhist or Islamic or any of those, then you say the same thing, that this body becomes null and void and you get a brand new body. Do you get a new black body? You get a new white body. You get a new Asian body? What body are you getting? Or are you saying that we're all energetic beings? Now, if we're all ascended, ascend through our consciousness, and we're all energetic beings, then race cannot exist in a higher conscious level. Otherwise, the conscious level is not higher. So when spiritual people tell me this, when conscious people tell me that they are that they have all these, they, they tell me all this racist stuff, and they say that they're of a higher consciousness, I really question that. I really question that, and so should you. So if you are claiming that, and then I do recognize we do have to deal with the mentality of this third dimensional plane. So don't get it confused. I recognize that there is no race on a higher dimensional plane, but we are on this plane and we have to deal with race. That there are people out there and people who will, who will kill you, cut you, put you down, take away from you, try to hurt you, harm you, oppress you. If they can put you into slavery, they would. If they can go on the street and pop, pop you in your head, they would. Simply based on race, I understand we have to deal with that, but you do not have to, have to let that be who you are. That doesn't have to be who you are. And when it comes to relating to people, it is as Dr. King said, judge by your character. Judge by your character and your content. Not by the color of your skin. If you're truly spiritual. If you're truly conscious. If you're truly even religious and you believe in the God that you talk about. The book that you talk about. Then you still should not agree to racism. You still shouldn't act as if there's a black heaven and a white heaven. So when you're in a relationship. It's supposed to be about love. You find this person. So like the young lady that I'm with now. I've known her for seven years. There have never been any pretenses between us, no representatives, because we knew each other. We were friends. There was no initial like, oh, I want to be with her. Oh, she's so fine. I mean, well, I did think she was fine. But <laughs> there was no thing of I'm going to be with her. I'm going to try. Let me see if I can get a number. Let me see if I can, you know, get with her, take her on a date or anything like that. There was no idea, no thought of going on a date at all. So we just became friends, legit friends. And yes, she's Christian. 
and we've had our discussions over the years and we came to understandings of that. We found the parts that we have unity on and we found respect in our divisions. Unity, respecting the divisions. We found those. Even in our, and what's beautiful about it, we first found them in our friendship. We didn't become enamored with each other and then find them. We found them within our friendship. And by finding them in our friendship, when we decided four months ago to the day that we were going to start dating, and I say we decided, but I kind of like, we was on a date. I invited her out on a date and I said, look, here's the deal. Been friends for a very long time and uh, you're going to be my woman now. So I uh, don't know what you need to get in order. Don't know what needs to happen, but we're going to date. We're an item. You're my lady. I'm your man. That's what it is. So from here on out, that's what we are. And that's pretty much that's that's, that's pretty much how that went for four months ago. She'll admit it. She'll she'll admit that that's how it went. Uh, but and if you listen to this video that long, I need to hear a comment about that one. I need to need to. I want to hear a comment about that one. I know people got something to say. But that's how that went. And the thing about it is that I respect her religion. I respect her practices and she respects mine. When I go into my meditation closet and I have my table set up with my little symbols and everything that I need and my cauldron and my candles and got my IMs on my board and everything's up there. I got my mudras and, you know, all my chants and tones and I play my musics and all that kind of stuff. My cephalajos and binaural beats and my chant um, meditations. She doesn't complain, she doesn't lie this and act funny and get all up in arms about it. She respects what I do. I respect what she does. I respect what she does. And we participate with each other to the length of our comfort. And I think that's one of the things that um, we should never do. Like I think one of Muhammad Ali's issues was that he expected her to be what he is. And she was only doing it for his sake. You should only do things to your comfort and then recognize the respect of it. I recognize that this woman loves me for me. And here's the final thought that I'm going to put on this. No, it's not going to be the final thought. <laughs> in everyone's religion, in everyone's teachings, and everyone's philosophies. You came into this world by yourself. You will leave this world by yourself. If you believe in a judgment of some sort or some kind, you're only judged based on you. You can't pray someone into heaven. You can't pray someone out of heaven. You can't, as the Hebrew Bible says, the sins of the father are no longer passed along to the son. That each person lives for themselves and their sin is their own. Their judgment is their own. No one says, no one's book says that at the final end, you will be judged and you will be able to save this person or that person. Your karmic debt cannot absolve someone else's karmic debt. You have to fulfill your own karmic debt, period. In the Hindu, you have to extinguish, let, allow the, the allow Kali to come and kill, kill your demons. Allow Kali, come, kill my demons. But then the ego of Kali must be subdued by the humility, the humility, the humbleness. I know I said humility. The humility and the humbleness of Brahma. So, and only you can do that for yourself. So even if you're in this relationship, and as I said in my time management video, do not waste your time over life trivialities. You believe that at the end, it's all up to you. And yes, I know there's the idea that, oh, I want them to go to my heaven. I want them to go to heaven with me and I need to save their soul and all this sort of thing, their spirit and all that. I get it, but you can't. And the thing about it, 
I will say this, for the hardcore religious person who says that only, I met a woman who she was saying that only her church from Hawaii Christians were going to heaven. And there are plenty of other sects that say only my group is going to heaven. Those For those people, yeah, if you're spiritual, it ain't gonna work. It's not gonna work. But if you're close, it could work. If you have a person who's religious, but they have an open mind and can respect it, it could work. It could work. It's all about respect. It's all about not going out, not being able to tell the person, I, I don't necessarily want to go to your church event. I don't necessarily want to go into your meditation or your temple. I don't necessarily want to go to your synagogue every time or this time or that time. Or uh, if, if I'm, I'm not going to violate and it's a respect thing. Understand how you say it. I'm not going to violate your sacred sacraments. Like I would never go to someone's church and and participate in communion, right? Not because a defilement of myself, because it doesn't mean anything to me. I wouldn't go and do it because out of respect for them and out of respect for their group. I'm not going to take one of their holy, what they consider their holy sacrament. And defile it by taking it, knowing that I could care less about it, as far as me personally. So I'm going to respect that, and and that's one of the things I I, I explain. I, I won't do communions. I won't do that. I won't. I, I'm not. I'm not going to pray in a name of a God that I don't believe in. I'm not going to do that. I, I lay down the things that I say. The, I'm not doing these, but I'm not doing them because. Not only is it something that I just don't believe in, but it's I find it disrespectful to you if I did that. So you have to set up those levels of respect and be open. If you can't be that open and y'all can't have that understanding, then it's not going to work. Now, if you got people who are close, like you take a Pentecostal and a uh, Kojic Church of God in Christ, you put them together. They're probably they're pretty close. They're going to work pretty well. You take an AME and a Methodist, they're going to work out pretty well. You know, two Baptists, they're good. You know, Baptists and a, and a Methodist, you're close enough. You know, two non-denominationals from two non different denominationals, non denom they're probably going to work. You know, that's that's probably going to work. That's, that's going to be all right. A Lutheran and a Catholic probably might work. You know, a Sunni Muslim and a Nation of Islam, they, they could probably work. You know, Muhammad Ali became a Sunni Muslim after he left the Nation of Islam. You know, they, they could probably work, you know. You got different slight variations. They could work out together. But even if you took a Hindu and a Buddhist, they can probably work together because they one came out of the other. The Buddhist came out of the Hindu. All right, and there's enough similarity, just like the Taoist came out of the Buddhist. And they can there's, a, there's enough for them to be able to work together. You know, uh, This is where you can see some Christian marriages, and Christian and Jewish marriages. And, and they, 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 they got enough combination where they can, pretty, they can work pretty well together. So... You have to find those commonalities, but more importantly, you got to find that level of respect. But more important than that, everybody religion talks about love. Every spirituality talks about love. If you can't show love to one another, then I have a question. Do you really believe in your spirit, your spirituality, your relationship with the creator, your relationship with the universe, your oneness? Do you believe in oneness or are you religious and you believe in doctrine? And doctrine creates separation. And that separation is what creates issues within a relationship, a marriage, a coupling. That's the problem. When you do that, then it's not going to work. But when you find that love is truly the answer, truly the key, that love is the thing that brings it all together, that that you look at that person and you check in, and, you know, as, as she likes to say, you know, I check this box. You know, Renzo, Renz checks this box. He checks this box. He checks it. He checks this. He checks it. He checks so many boxes more boxes than any other person, then you got to look at it's something different here. And maybe the universe, God, the creator, the intelligent designer, Yahweh, uh, Allah, Jehovah, Jesus, you know, Buddha, whomever, Confucius, they, they, maybe those ascended masters, maybe that creator brought you together to show that, to show the world that love truly does conquer all. Love conquers all. My lady is seven day of Venice and she loves me. Loves me. I'm spiritually conscious and I love her. We have our disagreement, but we find connection in the fact that we both believe in the oneness of God and the oneness of every 
person on the planet throughout time and history. Every creature, every energy, every aspect of this universe belongs to the one creator. That we are all connected through that. We look at different pathways. She has her pathway of understanding. I have my pathway of understanding. We respect each other. She listens to my videos. She asks a few questions here and there, but I never try to convert her to anything. And she never tries to convert me to anything. I'll go to her church and I'll visit and I'll, you know, respect her what she does on the Sabbath. I'm not going to ask her to do something outside of what she does on Sabbath. That's respect for her. Plus, I find it kind of great. We get to just spend some quiet time together. That's good quality time <laughs> as far as I'm concerned. But it's all about we have a level of respect. And yes, it grew over a seven year period. And maybe that's a different thing. Maybe that people aren't used to that. Maybe that's the directional path that we need to go in. Maybe we should, you should stop looking at someone like, ooh, they hot, they fine, they sexy. Ooh, he got money, she got a great job. Oh, she wearing that dress, he wearing that suit. And maybe become friends with somebody and say, let me see how this friendship develops. Let me know the real person. And as I know the real person, let me see if there is love. And there is really, and if love is really there, real love is present, then love can actually conquer all. Love can conquer all. Trust me, there are people who are not in favor of her not being together. Some of you listening to this are probably looking at me like, what? He's what? Well, if you knew me, you know, like I said, my first wife was Christian. My second wife was Christian. Actually, I've never dated anybody outside of Christianity. I've never dated. I, yep. Yes, I have. Sorry. <laughs> I have. And guess what? None of them work. Spiritually conscious people didn't work. Ephod didn't work. Christian this, Christian that didn't work. Loose Christian stranger Christian didn't work didn't work but none of them ended because of religion they all ended because of character flaws and I uh, let me not say character flaws incompatibilities in character is why they didn't work incompatibilities in how we live is why it didn't work incompatibilities in how we see the world and, and relate to the world is how it didn't work uh, but when you have it where you say that uh, my goal is to make my lady happy every day and my goal is to provide for her in her emotions provide for her spiritually provide her prefer provide for her physically provide for her yeah uh, mentally when when I'm, when you're saying that then it's different it's different because now you're beyond what man has written in a book written on a scroll written in stone now you're beyond what society has said is the norm and what should be. Now you're looking at the world totally different. You're looking at every existence totally different. And when you're doing that, you can have that wonderful thing. You can have that thing where you say, wow, I don't have to be anybody but myself with this person. And they love me for it. And they don't have to be anything but them themselves. And I love them for it. Every group is going to have their differences. 80-20 rule. And in relation to the two variations of that, 20% of what a person does give you 80% of your happiness and joy. But at the same time, you can never expect that a person is going to be 100% in sync with you. They are only going to be as much as 80%, 90% in sync with you. There are going to be some things that are not in sync. And you have to ask the question, are there imperfection and perfect for me? Are there imperfections perfect for me? That's the question. Donna's imperfections are perfect for me. Donna's differences are perfect for me. I actually love her level of religiosity and spirituality combined because it shows me a level of dedication. It shows me a level of conviction. It shows me that the amount of See, my biggest issue is people who believe something, they don't follow it. If you follow it, then follow it to say, and I know some people say, well, y'all are not equally yoked. I don't think you even know what equally yoked means in its totality. Because many people get married who are of the same religion are not equally yoked. You're not equally yoked financially. You're not equally yoked sexually. You're not equally yoked mentally. You're not in equally yoked intelligently. You're not equally yoked emotionally. You're not equally yoked in so many other areas, which is why your relationships keep breaking and breaking down. That's why, as well as some of mine. But equally yoked goes far beyond that. And you cannot expect to be equally yoked 100% with anyone. With anyone. And as long as I don't prevent her from doing her thing, she don't prevent me from doing my thing, we good. But as I was saying, I digress. 
The thing is this. No one's going to give you, no one's going to match you 100%. And if religion is one of those things that the person has to match you on, then let that be it. Because you can, in your mind, you're saying that, well, without God, we're not going to make it. we got to have God as our centerpiece. But you've been in relationships before, and you've been divorced before, you've been married before, and it still didn't work. And you had God, what you think you had as God. And it still didn't work. So maybe you need to look deeper into your definition of what God is to yourself, your relationship with God, which is your spirituality. Um, you should look deeper into that and realize that there are thousands of versions of trees out there. Why can't there be thousands of path pathways to the creator out there? And if there are, who are you to say who's this the right way or the wrong way? Unless you're insecure about your way. You see, I love the fact that she's not insecure about her way. I love that. Because she then she can understand why I'm not insecure about my way. And as long as we have respect, we work. We work so very well together. So, 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 so very well together. And that's what I want you guys to understand. It's all about connecting and unifying in it. Connecting and unifying and loving your differences. This video did go a lot longer than I anticipated. So I appreciate everyone who stayed this long. If you're finding me, like I said, you're finding me for the first time, hit that subscribe button. Uh, hit the bell icon so that you get notifications. And I appreciate everyone who shops at Uncle Ren's Popcorn. It means the world to me. Trust me, it means the world to me. Because that is how I feed my family, pay for my college kids. That is how I continue to be able to do these videos. That is how I'm able to go to different venues and talk to people. That's gives me time to be able to re respond and re respond to all your your comments and that sort of thing um, it, it will allow me time to do lives it will allow, eventually when I get enough people on patreon it will allow me to hire someone to do all the edits and do all the good stuff make the videos even better so uh, I look forward to that so you guys continue to support the channel I greatly greatly appreciate it and if you need a coach please go to coach and see which one of my programs work out great for you and then I'll be more than happy to work with you you know that's 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 what I really really want to spend my time doing so y'all have a great day and remember you have to free yourself to be yourself because your greatness is non-negotiable and as Kitchegar said the moment you label me you negate me and if you label me that means I gotta live up to your labels and then I'm not me. I'm not me. So learn to just label yourself as being yourself and nothing else but yourself. Because you are phenomenal. You are great. You are awesome. You are a divinely spiritual being. You are something that is beyond this meat suit that we live in. You are something that actually at the core of it all is pure love. And that pure love is stifled by the conditions of everything that's around you and everything that is placed in front of you. When you was born as a baby, you didn't see color, you didn't see religion, you didn't see gender, you didn't see none of those things. The only thing you saw as a baby, you didn't see religion, nothing. You just saw love. You saw people who loved you and people who didn't. And you responded to those who love you and those who didn't. And that's all you should be today. That's why all of them tell you to come as little children. So that you can just respond to people in love. Pure and simple. Y'all have a great day. Free yourself to be yourself. Because your greatness is non-negotiable.